Hi, and today I would like to talk to you about an ethics discussion on Dan Markinson and the CAFE study that he had participated in. November 12, 2003, Dan Markinson was admitted to a psychiatric unit at Fairview Hospital in which is a part of a University of Minnesota um, health system. At that time, Mr. Markinson was about 26 years old and had experienced his first psychotic break the year prior. As part of his psychosis, Mr. Markinson believed that he had been visited by aliens and that he was being called upon to commit mass murder as part of an apocalyptic storm, stating, I'm especially eager to attend this storm and slay those who deserve slaying. During his stay at Fairview, Mr. Markinson was admitted under Dr. Stephen Olson, who was head of the schizophrenia program at the University of Minnesota. Because Dr. Olson believed that Mr. Markinson was too psychotic and potentially dangerous, Mr. Markinson was determined to be incompetent to make his own decisions regarding medications and ordered a civil commitment. He was prescribed an antipsychotic risperidone, and on November 14th, Dr. Olson recommended that Mr. Markinson be involuntarily committed to a state psychiatric institution. On November 17, 2003, a county judge signed that civil commitment order, confining Markinson to a locked ward at Fairview University Medical Center. On November 20th, Olson asked a county court to grant Mr. Markinson a stay of commitment under which the conditions stay meant that patients can avoid physical confinement in a locked unit, but only if they agree to comply to the recommendations of the treatment team. On November 21st, just a day after the stay was granted, Dr. Olson asked Mr. Markinson to enroll in an industry-funded clinical trial of atypical antipsychotic drugs. Mr. Markinson signed a consent form for the study when his mother was not present. Whenever his mother, Mary Weiss, learned of his son's en her son's enrollment in the trial, she objected vehemently, but her objections were ignored. The antipsychotic trial, which was called the CAFE study, um, meaning comparison of atypicals and first episode psychosis, and was a double-blind year-long comparison study of three different antipsychotics, um, quetiapine, olanzapine, and risperidone. Stephen Olson was the principal investigator for the Minnesota site, um, along with two others. The CAFE study was sponsored by AstraZeneca, the manufacturer of Seroquel, or quetiapine, and after two weeks, Markinson was discharged to the Theo House, which is a residential facility for the mentally ill. Upon his discharge, he was required to sign an aftercare agreement stating that he understood that he could be returned to involuntary confinement if he failed to keep his CAFE study appointments and did not continue to take his study medication. Over the course of five months in the house, his mother tried repeatedly to have him removed from the study. She was convinced his condition was deteriorating and at one point told, Markinson told his mother that people were speaking to him through the television. A social work note on March 26, 2004 stated that Dan's thoughts were still delusional and grandiose and his mother felt that he was becoming increasingly agitated and tense and as if he were going to explode any minute. Mary Weiss warned the research team of her concerns and wrote five detailed letters to Dr. Olson explaining her worries. All of her letters went unanswered except for one, in which one of the other doctors wrote that it is not clear to me how you thought the treatment team should deal with this issue. And on April 11, 2004, Mary Weiss left the treatment team a distraught voicemail message for the study coordinator, Jean Keeney, asking, do you have to wait till he kills himself or anyone else before anyone does anything? Three weeks later, Markinson unfortunately committed suicide. Early morning on, the May, on May 8, 2004, and his corpse was discovered in a bloody bathroom at the Theo house, his head nearly severed from his body and his torso slit from throat to groin. Markinson had mutilated himself with a box cutter, and on the nightstand was a suicide note which read, I left this experience smiling. Some violations of this study um, include beneficence, which according to Paula and Beck, 
is the duty for researchers to minimize harm and maximize benefits. Another principle related to beneficence is non-malfeasance and is the obligation to minimize harm. These were violated when Mr. Markinson was enrolled in a double-blind study where his treating physician was not sure which medication was being given out of the three different atypical antipsychotics. Markinson was placed on risperidone while first undergoing treatment, and this medication was documented as effective. During the study, Mr. Markinson was documented as deteriorating instead of getting better and was not allowed to leave the study. The right to fair treatment may have also been violated because it appears that Mr. Markinson was chosen as a participant in the CAFE study based on his vulnerability. According to Paulette and Beck, those that are mentally or emotionally disabled that cannot weigh the risks and benefits of participation cannot legally or ethically provide informed consent. Mr. Markinson was given the 11-page informed consent while under a court-ordered psychiatric commitment without the presence of his mother or his advocate. Dr. Olson had submitted to the IRB that each participant would have an advocate present when receiving informed consent. However, Mr. Markinson did not. It is not clear if Mr. Markinson was granted the right to protection from exploitation or coercion as his treating physician, Dr. Olson, was also a head researcher in the CAFE study. Mr. Markinson was told that he could be discharged from the facility as long as he complied with treatment team recommendations and did not leave the study. It is also not clear if joining the study was part of the recommendations when the medication he was already taking was effective. Mr. Markinson may have felt obligated or coerced to participate in the study as his treating physician was the head researcher and was under a civil commitment status. Due to the reasons just mentioned, it is also not clear if Mr. Markinson had the right to self-determination, which means he should have been able to voluntarily leave the study at any time, and he was not. Mr. Markinson may have felt that if he left the study, he could go back to a lockdown facility, not to mention his documented deteriorating condition. Mr. Markinson may have not been able to make decisions for himself at that time. A conflict of interest was Mr. Markinson being under the care of Dr. Olson while Dr. Olson was also the head of the study. Another conflict of interest in Dan Markinson's case is that Dr. Olson had extensive contacts with AstraZeneca, the sponsor of the CAFE trial. The Minnesota Board of Pharmacy Records indicate that Dr. Olson received more than $83,000 in payments from AstraZeneca alone. In 2007, the American Journal of Psychiatry published the results of the CARE study, CAFE study, and among the 18 serious adverse events recorded for the 400 subjects in the study were an alleged homicide and five suicide attempts, including two successful suicides by both of the patients taking Seroquel, one of which was Dan Markinson. According to the study authors, Three AstraZeneca employees and seven academic physicians, many of whom also consulted for the company, the suicides occurred despite the close attention provided in clinical research aftercare programs. The authors claim that the care study showed Seroquel to be of comparable effectiveness to Zyprexa and Risperdal for first episode patients. In 2009, Minnesota legislator passed a law restricting the enrollment into drug trials of persons under stay of commitment or in the participation of research under a primary physician. This case also may have brought about how important it is to follow the IRB regulations in the rights of study participants, even though those were already set into place whenever this study occurred. And here are my references. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. I would love to hear from you.